imagine a power greater than all of these. The power of the human mind. A power that could move objects through space, interact with computers, control the fall of the dice. Is this scientific possibility or just a dream? Enter the fifth dimension and find out if there is such a thing as mind over matter. Can things be moved just by the power of the mind? Seeing the table move actually scared the hell out of me. It's clear that we were not lifting it with our fingers touching the tabletop very lightly. And this went on for about three hours in broad daylight. Scientists now believe we only use about 7% of our brain capacity. So what are the other 93%? Could there be hidden powers deep in the recesses of our minds? Imagine a power that could think photographs into existence. Levitate at will. Overcome the laws of chance and change the odds of winning at the casino. Anything is possible. It's doing something that science says it shouldn't do. Like plastic. It's gonna go now. Look. Or is there really such a thing as PK, psychokinesis, the power of the mind to control the physical world? Scientists everywhere are trying to unlock its secrets. But there are baffling cases modern science has been able to reach. Extraordinary stories of a Russian housewife began to filter through the Iron Curtain in the 60s. Thirty-three-year-old Nina Kulagina claimed psychokinetic powers. Her husband filmed her first attempts and scientists have been arguing ever since. Kalagana apparently has the ability to move small objects over relatively small distances with a great deal of psychic effort. What troubles me about a case like that is that the phenomena are inherently small scale. Over 40 international scientists were called in to examine Kalagana under controlled conditions. They claimed there was no rational explanation for her mysterious powers, but modern scientists are skeptical. French parapsychologist Mario Favoglis. She was attacked many times by skeptics, Russian and otherwise, but I don't know of any legitimate good critiques of her work. So if that does not exist, if there are no good critiques, then the phenomena that seem to produce are quite impressive. In 1967, the unforgiving cameras were again focused on her, this time by a Russian team. Even in close-up, it's hard to see how she's making the box shift across the table, but it certainly is moving. Russian physicist Leonard Rishkov was present and observed her closely. People who perform these kind of acts are under an enormous physical pressure. The veins of Kolagina were swollen. She started to sweat. And if she was lifting a heavy item, she really had to make an effort to achieve this. Dr. Rishkov and his team built an airtight glass box for the experiments. This was to prevent any possibility of her using magnets or an electrostatic charge or even blowing objects with her breath. Again, the results were startling. Uh, 
Кулагина could move the matches as if a wind had pushed them. She didn't feel too well that day and did not want to experiment with larger objects. But through the glass box, any form of physical manipulation would have been impossible. Whatever else was happening, it was clear Kulagina was using enormous amounts of energy during the sessions. She lost weight. She complained of headaches. During one PK test, her pulse rate soared to over 200 beats a minute. Her brain activity registered four times normal level. Usually she only gave sessions after many hours of careful preparation, which made some critics suspicious. But one day she was caught off guard. In 1974, two German scientists paid her a surprise visit. Psychologist Jürgen Keil from the University of Tasmania was one of them. As we got in, Kamba, the next at the Sögen. When we arrived, she hesitated a bit, but when she heard that nobody knew of the whole thing, she was very friendly and invited us to come in and invited us to stay to have dinner with her. And she even started to move things while we were still eating. Kyle filmed Kulagina at work in her own home. How did she do it?